We're talking about how to use our programming to create quarto documents or quarto outputs, which could be Word documents, PDFs, web pages, dashboards, etc., etc. Quarto documents basically weave together narrative elements like the text on the screen that you're seeing at the moment and executable code all into one output. When we create a Quarto document, we use something called YAML at the beginning of the document to basically say how to configure the document and control its behavior. So let's dive right in. Boom shakalaka. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. Everything you're seeing on the screen at the moment was created in our studio using Quarto, right? And you can create these sorts of HTML outputs, lovely dashboards like this that are interactive, and even PDFs that have lovely references. So before we talk about the details of YAML, I want you to know that there are three places where it appears, and it's quite important to understand how these relate to each other. The first and the most obvious is at the top of your Quarto document, there will always automatically be some YAML code and that will define how it is that the entire document is rendered. Sometimes you might want to include some YAML in a code chunk itself. And if you put, so here, this is YAML, right, that I've got right here. If you put YAML into a code chunk, it will take precedence over the YAML that's at the top of your document. And the third place where you could find YAML is if you've created a Quarto project. Now, what does that mean? Sometimes you're not just creating one document, but you might want to create a series of documents and you want them all to have similar formatting, et cetera, et cetera. Then you create a Quarto project. The good thing about creating projects is that R will automatically set your working directory and everything works much more cleanly. I always recommend working in projects, so I'll quickly show you how to do that. So instead of just creating a Quarto file, you would go to new project, new directory, Quarto project and then you'd create a new project right there. And when you create a Quarto project, R produces this little file over here called Quarto.yml. And that's basically a YAML file that'll have YAML that'll apply to all of the Quarto documents that you create in that project. So there's this hierarchy. There's a YAML file that we're looking at at the moment that will apply to all of your Quarto documents. Inside your project, you may have a particular Quarto document that into which you can apply YAML that will overwrite or take precedence over your YAML file and will apply to just this document. And then within the document, you may have chunks that have YAML code that overwrite both of the above. So let's take a little bit of a look at how YAML instructions fit together, right? Let's look at this nested structure that you can have at the bottom over here. You could just say format colon and then a space HTML and it'll format that document as HTML. But you may have more details underneath HTML that you want to also specify. In which case you go to the next line and you go two spaces to the right. This is how the nested structure work. And you say HTML colon because you've got more to say. You go down a line and you go another two spaces to the right. And here we've got TOC which means that there's going to be a table of content and you're saying that that's true. So yes, we want a table of content and you want numbered sections true and you can keep going. So your HTML formatting can be as there's millions of things you can do. Well, here you go. Here's all of the HTML formatting. It's not even all of them, but these are the ones that are possibly more useful and more important. Now remember at the end of the video, there'll be a link on the screen and you can click on it and it'll give you access to this document. You'll, it'll take you to learnmore365.com. Uh, you can sign up for free and you can access all of these documents. Uh, and what that means is you can come here and just copy this and stick it straight into your YAML and then make the changes that you'd like to make. And here, of course, you've got examples of uh, YAML options for how your code appears. Does the code fold up? Uh, is it gonna be appearing at all? Are the lines numbered, et cetera, et cetera? That's if you want to show your code. Um, if you're creating a PDF, here is some YAML that you can use to define what the PDF might look like. Here's some YAML for the language and bibliography, some YAML for the execute options, all of this, of course, you can just cut and paste straight from this document and stick it into your own YAML. And here are some common examples of sort of project level YAML. So you might want to, for the entire project, say echo is true. So you'd want all of the code to be shown. Uh, you might, for the entire project, not want to show warnings and messages. I think that, that should be false in general. Um, and then you might have document level YAML in which you kind of overwrite some of that. So here I've said for this particular document, echo equals false. So for this particular document within the project, we're not going to show the code, for example. And here are the more commonly used code chunk options. Okay, and this is YAML that goes right into your code chunk. I'm not going to go through all of these. Actually, I've got a video on code chunks, go and watch that. We get into all of the detail about these in that video. Now, if there are aspects of your document that you really want to control that can't be controlled with YAML, 
there's also the option of using styling with CSS. And this really is actually writing HTML code to define what happens on your, if it's a web page that you're creating. I've got some nice quick and easy workarounds and you might find this useful. So before I show you how to create a CSS file, I just wanna show you that basically I've got all of these uh, sample blocks of code that you can literally stick straight into your CSS document and then make the little tweaks and changes that you might want in your document, right? So you don't need to learn HTML, you literally just need to learn how to copy and paste. And for example, you know, code block, you wanna change the color and this is, you know, this is uh, where you change the color, et cetera, et cetera. So this has all been done for you. You get this document, you come cut, paste, stick it into your CSS file and then make the changes that you wanna make for your document. So how do you create a CSS file? Not difficult, you just go to file, create new CSS file. It will create a file that is basically doesn't have a name. You need to save that as a, and call it custom underscore style. And then in your YAML under HTML format, HTML two spaces, remember say CSS colon uh, custom style, and it will reference this document that you've got in your project. Okay, and just remember you can access all of these HTML files, this information. If you click on the link on the screen right now, it'll take you to learnmore365.com, create an account for free, and you can access all of this. Hope you're doing well, don't ever change, don't do drugs, always do your best, speak to you soon, take care, bye.